All right, what's good, y'all? I now I've been researching Rajon Rondo recently, and I always want to know why he thinks the way he does. In basketball, he's known for his high IQ, tremendously high IQ, one of the highest of all time, maybe top ten. But that's a video for another day. But at least when it comes to his coaches, he's always but but it has with them. I always want to know why. I think I've got the answer. Because he, quote unquote, suffers from the curse of the genius. I mean, that he's too smart for his own good. So let's let's check this out. I understand why this is the case. Not only great at basketball, but then his teachers, because he was so brilliant, thought he was cheating. So his coach and math professor, Doug Bibby, went on the record to Slam Magazine saying, I was looking at his advanced math tests, these long drawn problems that me and people in my department can do with no work. I said, yo, he's cheating off somebody. So next time around, Bibby gave Rondo a different test than the 29 other students. The result was the same. Dude gave me the test back, no work with just answers. And guess what? Every problem was right. The kid is brilliant. Once Rondo, another one involving math, was dozing while Bibby scrawled a geometry problem on the chalkboard. And when Bibby called on him, Rondo woke up, rubbed his eyes, and blurted an answer. Don't be an asshole, Bibby muttered. Yeah, we could say that. Then Bibby finished the problem and found out that Rondo was right, but he still gave him a D. Rondo was probably the kid I hated. Sure, at least to me, it sounds like the teacher did the problem way too slow. Because <laughs> I've done this, I don't necessarily say I, I doze off in class and blurted out the answer, but <laughs> sometimes... Teachers, teachers just go way too slow, man. I already understand it. Gotcha. I'll just be sitting there wasting time, waiting for them to give the answer to the rest of the students. But hey, <laughs> gotta understand that some people they just aren't at that level yet. They're on as they're on the same level as you, and whatever subject that may be. I hate it until then. The fact that he woke up from a nap and still, like... In two seconds could figure out... And here comes this big genius over here. Not paying attention, distracted, talking in class. Yeah, I'm over here raising my hand because I studied, even, and I'm probably still going to get it wrong. And she picks on this kid mm -hmm. and he gets it right. Every time. Jesus. He was brilliant. That's for you. <laughs> Sucks for you. You just don't have to be. You're just not gifted in the same way he is. Sorry. Yeah. Now. So here's what he did when he transferred to Oak Hill Academy from Eastern High School. Oak Hill Academy, by the way, as many people know, this is where Carmelo Anthony went, along with many, many Brandon Jennings, many great high school players go to this private school. He had a school record in assists. Holds a school record in assists, 494. A single game record in assists with 31. The NBA record is 30, I believe, with Scott Skiles, by the way. They had an undefeated season, and he was a McDonald's All-American. I never have to call the coaches to recruit our players, but in Rajon, I started to call some of them. He wanted to stay close to home. The only one college in that area who offered him was Kentucky. The reason that Louisville did not offer him a scholarship is because, as you'll see right here via the Courier Journal, and who was on Grace the Cover of SI, Grace the Cover of Slam Magazine, was a guy named Sebastian Telfair. Everyone who's an NBA fan, including Craig, who's working the stream, absolutely knows who Sebastian Telfair is. He was supposed to be the next great high school player. He was offered a scholarship at Louisville, and of course, Rajon wanted to go to Louisville. He's from Louisville, wanted to stay close to home. The only real legit offer he got was Kentucky, and that's why this piece was written, where he wanted to just beat up on Sebastian Telfair. Of course, as we know, as history proved, Telfair did not go to college, went straight to the pros and fizzled out. So while, Ron, uh, while Rondo- That's why it's important to play the long game. <laughs> Someone could be better than you at something right now. Five years later, they won't be known and you may be known. <laughs> Who knows, both of y'all may not be known. Who knows? <laughs> But it's important to play the long game for as long as possible. That's how you see the most successful people. <laughs> Shoot, they weren't known that early in high school. Now you know them now, Elon Musk. Nic <laughs> I was going to say Nikola Tesla, um, Steve Jobs, whoever they may be. 
Guaranteed they weren't the most popular people in high school. <laughs> but hey, they're the most known people in the world now. Rondo was at Eastern, L was thought to be the front runner. The Telfair situation deterred things at Louisville is what Bibby said, but I told Rondo that he couldn't blame Louisville for signing Sebastian Telfair while he was at Kentucky. He was an SEC all freshman team selection, a UK record 87 steals in a season, a UK record most rebounds by a guard in a game at nine, with 19, and he was benched six games, although he was an all SEC first team selection. Here is why he was benched and maybe is the same sort of mantra that you had about that student in class, because Tubby Smith had this to say, former coach of Kentucky. It's like being in the classroom with 30 some kids, they all don't learn at the same level. And then you have one that's just so superior. Hey, we got to find other work for him to do. Really, that's the way Rajan was. That is a challenge for coaches to be creative, just like it would be a teacher in the classroom. Man, I'm telling you. Just <laughs> Sue, it's a challenge for the coaches. Think about, think about the student. Think about the player. <laughs> like, imagine. And if you have the same gift, you'll understand. Imagine going into a room. Knowing you're smarter than everyone else by far. <laughs> and going into a room knowing knowing everyone else is an idiot. <laughs> you know how unfortunate that is? <laughs> you being forced to work at such a slow pace. Like, that just sucks. <laughs> and the thing is, shoot. You're the smartest in the room. You should be trying to leave that room as quick as possible. To where you're not the smartest in the room anymore. <laughs> Learn from somebody else. Learn from people like-minded. Stuff like that. Shoot. Being in a room and it's one kid out of 30. That means be gifted intellectually. Especially if the teacher isn't. It's going to be frustrating on a student. Just as much as, as it's going to be frustrating on a coach or teacher. Just annoying in class and on the court. Uh huh. Off the back. That's uh -huh. funny though, because as a coach, you don't, these are problems you never even walk in thinking you're going to have. You don't walk in thinking, Jesus, I have to plan a, a completely different, you know, play workout for this individual. Mm -hmm. It's so easy for a coach to just like bench this guy or just give him something that he already knows, yeah. you know? It's, yeah. it, cause what do you do as a coach? You've studied, Man. you know, in the off season, you've prepared your workouts, you've talked to your coaching staff, and it all of, months of work is still not enough. Like, what do you do as a coach? Well, that's probably gonna lead to the struggle that many coaches had with Rajan and why his brilliance may be misinterpreted. So then in April of 2006, he was selected by the Boston Celtics when he entered the draft. And he was fantastic. However, what many people don't know is that he wasn't actually a Boston Celtic. This is the Boston Globe, May 17, 2009. By the time the Celtics and Phoenix Suns completed a 2006 draft night deal for the point guard, Ainge and company knew exactly what to expect. For Rajon, draft night wasn't what he expected. Being picked number 21 was a tough lesson in patience. He described the wait to hear his name as the longest time ever in my life. So then Baxter Holmes had a good write-up via ESPN, and he said, he, as in Rajon, is a contrarian. I figured that out early, he, and this was Doc Rivers. He'd ask, well, why wouldn't we do it this way? Sometimes I'd answer, well, which way do you want to do it? He'd say, no, I like the way we're doing it. I'm just asking. That's a rondo. <laughs> and the thing is, Doc Rivers, he's simple-minded, okay? <laughs> Some people may not like that, but that's okay. They're, they may be simple-minded, too. <laughs> But Doug Rivers, he's a simple-minded coach dealing with a critical thinker in Rajon Rondo. He just wants to know the purpose. He wants to know why you do it this way. Why wouldn't we do it this way? As a coach, you're supposed to have the answers to those questions. Because if you don't have the answers, I don't understand why you're coaching. Why are you in that position? If you don't know why you're doing something, you're wasting your time. It's as simple as that. When he was a boy, his friends wore Air Jordan sneakers, which forced him into Air Max. Even now, when the Celtics work out in green shirts, he, cho he chooses white. So that's the sort of mentality that he has. Coach Brian Dew, who's the strength and conditioning coach for the Celtics, always sought activities to keep him engaged. Golf, tennis, home run derby with softballs, pool, ping pong. 
uh, throwing footballs off the wall into a trash can, printing out math equations, racing to solve them first, trying to top each other in all these different brain games. If you can't keep up with him here, is what he said, he won't listen to you. Because there's no respect level. <laughs> At least in Rajan, Rajan Rondo's mind, he's like, why should I listen to an idiot? <laughs> You don't know as much as me, but I should be listening to you, right? That's what's going on in Rajon Rondo's mind. And I don't blame him. <laughs> so, if you're smarter than somebody, I don't understand why you'd be listening or taking advice from someone that isn't as smart as you. At least in whatever subject that may be. That's why there's levels to everything. That tells me so much. Yeah. About him, right? Yeah. He ha constantly has to stay busy. He constantly has to be challenging himself, even if it's like in something that's completely foreign to him. I, I feel like that's something he prefers. And ironically, even just like when you mentioned the example of Connect Four, it's something that he can apply to his game. Right. Because everything is different. Mm -hmm. Right. There's not just one thing that works out every time. Here's the weirdness of Rajan Rondo. He takes five showers on game days. The last one, precisely 45 minutes before tip. Because he does his best thinking in the water. Hmm. He's a fish. He jumps out to scribble ideas which can present problems since he's a germaphobe who hates being barefoot. I can, that's understandable. It is. Who would want to be barefoot in a shower? That's probably. Uh, if like it's my shower. If it's his training facility. Um, well, it's 45 minutes before a game. He's right, probably right. in the training facility. I understand. That's the only time. Like in college, you have shower shoes. Right. Yeah. So I get it. Um, he keeps three or four pairs of shower, there you go, of, uh, shower shoes in his locker. Important. I'm a little OCD, is what he admitted. He guzzles five bottles of water on the drive to the arena, so he doesn't have to bother with Gatorade cups on the bench. That's smart. He tucks a tube of Carmex in his sock to keep his lips hydrated. The company sends hundreds of refills. Helpful considering how many teammates ask for a dollop. He puts it on their fingertips, by the way. Smart. Because he's a germaphobe. I never understood people that, that just put put chapstick on their lips and give it to someone else. And they put on their nah, bro. That that's that's sus. I'm not gonna lie, that's sus. Kevin Garnett would go on the record saying Shorty is what he nicknamed Rajon Rondo. Doesn't always listen to everybody. He'll tell you right off the top, I don't want to hear that shit or get the hell away from me. Kobe. I'm the same. <laughs> the same way. <laughs> Like Kevin Dur not Kevin Durant, Kevin Garnett, bro. Like he he's an energy dude, but he's not someone you'd respect by the way he thinks. He's someone that's gonna rile everybody up, get everyone excited for the game. But he tells you something, you're gonna you're just gonna be like, all right, bro. He he doesn't know what he's talking about. Kobe said he knows all the plays, know all, knows all the actions, and can think two, three moves ahead freakishly smart. Doc Rivers had one of the best quotes about Rondo. Our biggest disagreements were usually to stop outsmarting yourself because he's so far ahead of the next action. You'll run a play, it'll work, then he's already thinking about what to do if they counter. And I would say, well, they haven't countered yet, so let's not change it until they counter. We would run a play that works, and he would come down and change the play. I'd say, why would you change that? He'd say, just in case. I say, well, let's let them mess up first, and then we'll change it because he thinks. Of and I think why, <laughs> and 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 on this, I'm I'm neutral about it because here's the thing: <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's let's get this out the way. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep going through it, but but always have a plan B. <laughs> it's important to think ahead. <laughs> At least to me, that is it's some. It's, Extremely important to think ahead. He does one move. Okay, I'm going to do this move. Same thing with plays in basketball. That's But that's the simple-mindedness of Doc Rivers. Because <laughs> he wants to mess... I, he wants to mess up first. I don't think there's anything wrong with messing up, per se. But if you don't have a backup plan, then... Once, once plan A goes out the window, you won't know what to do. Why do you think Doc Rivers blows so many leads in the playoffs? It's like, okay, I'm just going to keep doing this. Oh, they figured me out. Um, I don't know what to do from there. Rajon Rondo, he, he, he's he got to play A through Z. <laughs> A 
every letter of the alphabet. <laughs> then he got <laughs> then he got numbers one through ten of a plan too. He knows he eats in every stuff of each plan. Thinks of the game so differently, right. right? You're smirking already because he thinks of the game so differently that he would clash with coaches who think that they can outsmart Rondo. Right, and I think part of it. And the thing is, when <laughs> and, and anybody can feel this when someone's when someone you know that doesn't know what they're talking about is acting like they do, that can be frustrating. And and here in Rajon Rondo's case, it's like. He's, he's having Doc Rivers over him. He's like, bro, why are you telling me what to do? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an all-time point guard. One of the highest IQs ever. And you're telling me this? When that doesn't work or that won't work. The thing is, people with that high of IQ, other people aren't going to be able to understand. They won't understand until it's too late. Of it is just because of how easy, maybe it's because of how easy he was able to read plays from the opposing team that maybe he was afraid that there was somebody out there, maybe not as smart as him, but maybe with that same capability to mm -hmm. read that play. So he's like, okay, well, before they even try to learn the player, before they walk in, assuming they know the play, I'm going to completely deroute what's going to happen and give you like this counter play. Right. Of course, it makes it more challenging to his teammates because his teammates are like, I thought we were going to run this or, or this is what we practice. So You know what it sounds like? Sorry to... It's and the thing is, Rajon Rondo, I practice, he has to tell his teammates what's going on in his mind before he actually executes it in the game. He's like, okay, they're going to do this. All right, let me tell my teammates. Everyone else is on the same page. That's how you get out of situations like that. It's hard to interject here. Or not even get out of. Don't let those situations happen in the first place. You know what it sounds like is Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And Mike McCarthy trying to outsmart Aaron Rodgers when Aaron Rodgers is in the huddle and calls out of a play. Right. That's basically what it sounds like happened with Rick Carlisle and Rajon Rondo when he was with what many of you, and he does too, on the record saying that it was just a failed marriage. Right. Between Carlisle and him. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, so there's more. This is how much of a brainiac he is. Before Rondo's first playoff series against Atlanta in 2008, the Celtics distributed a 100-page book full of the Hawks' plays and stats. He took it home and then challenged assistant Darren Ehrman, quiz me on anything. Rondo nailed every question until Ehrman tossed a curveball, a question about something that wasn't in the book. Fuck you, that's not in there, is what Rajon said. That is how much he memorized this. So, even, and we go. So, so Rajon Rondo knows his opponents. Thing is, LeBron James, he does the same thing. <laughs> Every team he plays against, he knows their plays too. It's not going to work on someone like those two. We go back to Rick Carlisle. Didn't want to talk to the media after they had that lashing out between player and coach in game. He said, we won. Discuss it with Rick. So to put a bow on this, he has had great runs with NBA teams. He has had failed runs with NBA teams. But one thing that I had to throw in here at last was one of the most unique personalities in the NBA, as Nick Ferdell writes on Twitter. He just helped workers at T-Mobile Arena roll some beer kegs down the hallway before walking back into the Lakers locker room. Good he is a person that is totally misunderstood, in my opinion. And I think will make a great head coach. And that's the thing. <laughs> when you're highly gifted at whatever that may be, in this case, intellectually, you're going to be misunderstood. At the end of the day, you're just going to have to accept it. Accept the good that comes with the bad. But hey, here's a positive. You're not like everyone else. Coach or front office. The thing is, the thing is, that gift is what makes you unique. Can't hide your gift. You have to let it flourish and expand. Office executive if he wants to be one, in my opinion. Absolutely. I think he'd make a great head coach. I, I think that would... Of course, you're right, front office too, but just the fact that he's just so passionate about the game, the fact that he can outsmart even himself or his coaches sometimes, mm -hmm. it makes it makes a more fitting position for him to maybe retire and be a coach because of how smart he is. I mean, no Derek, doubt. Fisher, Derek Fisher is coaching, not, no diss on Derek Fisher, but... Former coach. Former coach. Yes. Rondo can do the same thing. Absolutely. And I'll be honest though, I don't know if Rondo would, if Rondo would make a good coach.
To be honest, I say I'm getting frustrated at players not seeing what he can see on the court. I actually think he'd be a way better film film breaker, whatever, whatever they're called, where they break down film. Those people, I think he'd be really good at that. But as a coach, I'm not too sure. Because as a player with his IQ, he's going to be frustrated seeing players not being able to see the same things he could see. I think that's the same problem Larry Bird had when he used to coach. Absolutely. And, and really, I'm curious. Usually when you're highly gifted, it's people. It's going to be hard showing other people what's the right thing to do. Or at least in film, film is way easier to do that because you're able to slow it down. But in real time, it's going to be frustrating. That's why I think if someone that's worked hard and got up to that point, say they weren't as smart or as gifted as Roger Rondo did, but worked hard and memorized all these plays, stuff like that, they'd make a better coach than Rondo. That's, that's just my perspective on it, though. I'm curious to see... I'm curious to see him coach a youth team. Ooh. And I'm going to tell you why, because they're the... Instant frustration. Don't do it. <laughs> Rondo, if you're listening, don't do it. The hardest yes. to get through. Yes. If he can get through a youth basketball team, he can do it all. Exactly, exactly my point. They're the hardest to get through. Why would you put yourself through that pain? That's a fair challenge. Point. Totally fair point. <laughs> so let us know your thoughts. Is Rajan Ron? Anyways, that's it on this one. Rajan Rondo, he's a critical thinker, high level thinker. Lots of respect for him intellectually. I believe he's just re signed with the Lakers this season again. So we'll see what he does this season. So peace.